Welcome to another episode of Cooking with Lewis and Clark. That's Mr. Graham. That's Mr. Gimby. That's Mr. Raymond. And today we're making buffalo beans and bacon. Those are three important bees, but the most important bees are eating this with your best buds. Who could not be here today. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> The Corps of Discovery enjoyed this feast on July 4th, 1805, with Lewis writing in his diary that they could in no way be envious of the meals had back home. Now for you history nerds out there, the 4th of July may seem like a familiar date. This meal would become a staple in the diet of the American cowboy, so yeehaw. yippee ki my friends, let's start cooking. In order to make buffalo beans and bacon, you obviously need to have some buffalo. We've got some lean buffalo meat here that we're gonna use in our recipe. We also have beans. We have kidney beans and black beans that we're gonna to use today. We also have bacon, which is my favorite flavor of pig. We're gonna use four cups of beef stock, two tablespoons of all-purpose flour, an onion, two potatoes, and just like we had in the 80s, Mr. Graham, a little salt and pepper, which we're gonna push real good. The first step in making buffalo, beans, and bacon is we've got to chop up our bacon and we have to cut up our onion. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, make sure you ask for parental supervision before using a sharp knife in your backyard to cut bacon and onions. Mr. Graham, you want to do the bacon? Absolutely. I got the onion. You watch this technique and skill. This is a tough pig. I figured out, I have to have a sawing motion. What we were gonna do once we had the bacon and the onions chopped up was we were gonna put both of these things into our iron skillet and then put them over the hot fire. I can smell those onions. Need some help with that bacon? Yeah, you grab it. Mr. Gimby, do you wanna take a test taste to make sure this is actually bacon? Yeah. Bacon? Yeah, bacon. Raw pork's not bad, right? I'll put that fat in here. That's what's gonna give it flavor. You all ready? Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna saute this over the fire. The recipe says medium heat, and last time I checked, that fire was hot. We're gonna call it medium. Remember, fire is not a toy. Fire is not a toy. Now that our bacon and our onions are sizzling over this medium heat fire, we've got to come over here to our table and we're going to take our flour, add it to our buffalo meat, and the recipe says to toss it. I don't want to toss it because it's windy, but I'll get in there. Once that beef is covered, Mr. Graham, if you want to do the honors and if you want to add and push that salt and pepper in there real good. I'd be glad to. All right, a little salt and pepper for seasoning. Our flour and salt and pepper and beef concoction is gonna go into the skillet and we're gonna cook it till it's brown. Mr. Graham, if you could do the honors, take the lid off of that pot. Yep. And we're gonna cover that up and let that cook and brown that meat. So there's a lot of different types of potatoes out there. These are russet potatoes. In my opinion, they're a good middle of the road potato. Not as fancy as Yukon Gold, but I think far superior to your red potatoes. There's a lot of ways you can skin a potato. I'm gonna use a tool called a knife. Oh man, I'm cutting way too much potato. I think that that way mm -hmm. is pretty appealing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me just check to make sure this is a potato. Potato. I know this is hard to believe, but I have no professional training in cooking. Just like that, we're almost halfway done. <laughs> Startled me.
All right, did a pretty bad job on that one, but we'll recover. Looks like a really nice job. I think you're lying to me. During the time it took Mr. Gimby to uh, professionally peel and cut up the potatoes, our beef has been browned. Now it's not cooked the whole way through. So the next step is we have to add the beef stock. Mr. Gimby wanted to do the honors of adding the beef stock. First of all, let's make sure that that is beef stock. Beef stock? Beef stock. All right. We're going to add the beef stock to our onion, bacon, meat concoction. We're going to put the lid back on that, bring that to a boil. Once it's boiling, this has to cook for 45 minutes. And then we're going to eat. But before that 45 minutes is up, we will add the beans and the potatoes. All right, we're going to check to see if our bacon, beans, and buffalo are boiling here. Mr. Gimme, you want to give that an eye test and to determine if that's boiling or not? Well, that appears to be a physical change, so I think we're safe to say it's boiling. All right, this has to cook for 45 minutes. That is a magic. Extra emphasis on 45 minutes. <laughs> All right, so our stew has been boiling now for the last 30 minutes. Now we're gonna add first the beans, Mr. Graham. All right, and go. We have just completely ruined this. Doesn't oh. that look good? God, I hate beans. And Mr. Gimby, the potatoes? Oh, yeah. Russet potatoes. Russet potatoes. Not russet, russet. Russet. Oh, that really thickened that up really quick. All right, we are gonna let our beans and bacon and beef cook for another 15 minutes, and then we can have dinner. 1805 style. Well, according to my watch, Mr. Graham. 45 minutes. 45, 45 minutes, Mr. Gimby. 45, 45 minutes. minutes, yep. 45 minutes, all right. <laughs> all right, let's see what it looks like. We have got buffalo, beans, and bacon with my buds. Best buds. Ooh, doesn't that look delicious? Pretty good. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna carefully move it over to the table. Whew, that is steaming. It looks epic, minus the beans. I think it's gonna taste epic. It's got that thick texture to it, like a stew. Mm -hmm. I could definitely see how this would have been like celebration food. And for I can the see how July. party food for cowboys. Yeah. Everybody, the rule is, is we all have to eat something that's, everything that's in it. Okay. All right. Mr. Gimby. Well, thank you. Mr. Graham. Thank you. Yeah, this is incredibly hot. Let's just like, let, let's procrastinate and pause for a second. Uh-huh. Well, gentlemen, buffalo beans, bacon, some potatoes. All right, bon appetit. Let's see what happens. You know, the texture of the beans matches the texture of the potatoes. Not bad. So I really can't tell, like with my eyes closed, I can't tell the difference between the bean and potato eating this. Now, if I was gonna make this again, I would do less beans. More potato? No, less potato, no potato or beans. Oh, really? Okay. Just beef and bacon. That's it. The beef is really well done. It tastes good. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Fourth of July meal. A picnic. A celebration. Yeah, buffalo beans and bacon, just like Lewis and Clark and Accord Discovery did 1805. 1805. On July the 4th of July, celebrating our nation's independence. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Mr. Graham. That's Mr. Gimby. That's Mr. Raymond. We'll see you guys next time on another episode of Cooking with Lewis and Clark. That was pretty good. It does smell. It does taste really good, too. Mmm. Push it. During the time it took Mr. Gimby to uh, professionally peel and cut up the potatoes, the, the our concoction, or during the time that it took Mr. Gimby to peel and cut professionally, I might add our potatoes. I should get a straw and put it in the broth. Like, <laughs> I can go find us a straw. I'll do that if you want. I'll drink the broth. Huh? I'll drink the broth, yeah. Can't forget the most important ingredient, salmonella. <laughs> <laughs> this episode brought to you by self-loathing. <laughs> <laughs>
Salmonella with a side of botulism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your microphone's gonna smell like bacon for a little bit. I'm sorry.